Welcome to this 1.12 Minecraft modding tutorial. Um, I'm going to be showing you how to add in custom structures and have the chests inside have loot added to them and all that stuff. So in the past, um, with Forge, if you wanted to make custom structures, you had to hard code them in. But now Minecraft has added a built-in way um, of importing structures where we don't have to hard code them in anymore. So um, this method uses data blocks. So first things first, you're going to want to get yourself a data block. So you're going to want to type give player name um, structure block. So now I, I got another one there you just saw. So now there's different settings on these. So I, first one you'll place down will be data, but you can cycle through the different modes. So see this one's corner here. Now, in order to get this outline here, you're going to have to place two corner blocks. And you see the name up here is set to sub. You're going to want to have both of them set to the same name. And you can just, you can just cycle through the different modes by hitting the button down here. So, and then once you get your two corner blocks, you're going to want to make a data block, or no, not a data block, a save block. So you're going to want to put it in save mode, and then you're going to want to hit text, and you're going to want to make sure that it has the same name as the two corner blocks you have up there. So you're just going to want to hit text, and once you do that, it's going to make this outline. And everything in this outline is going to get exported into a NBT file um, in your world folder in your world folder folder under structures. So that's how that's done. But also there's another thing I want to talk about in here. So there's these data blocks here. And what you're going to want to do is any container or anything that you want to have to spawn loot in you're going to want to place one of these over them, these, these blocks here. Now, give it a name that you'll remember. And if you have different kinds of like inventories, like a bring sand versus a chest, just give them two different names, but keep them consistent. And you'll be able to cycle through all the different inventories you have here. And also these blocks will disappear once it spawns in, uh, cause in the code, we'll actually be setting them to air blocks after. So, You've created your structure. Um, it's ready to export. All you want to all you want to do to export is just hit save. And now we're gonna want to go into our structures folder in our world file. So I'll show you how to do that. So so now we're gonna want to go to our percent app data file. So uh, to do that, you gotta type percent app data percent and. There we go uh and then you'll want to go into your saves folder and you want to go to the world that you set up the structures blocks in and you'll it'll be in the world folder under structures and then you'll find this uh nbt file so you want to copy that and now i'm assuming you have your mod set up in eclipse or some kind of ide like that so next thing you'll want to do is you'll want to go and you'll want to create a file called assets, your um, mod name, and then structures. And it has to be exactly named like this. So then just paste in your NBT file. Now, I'm not going to be typing the code out line for line because that would take forever and this video would just be ridiculously long. I'm just going to be kind of explaining the code and going over it. So first things first, um, your Minecraft is going to be looking for the file that we want to generate with. So we're going to use the temple command here, or the, we're going to be, we're going to be using the temple manager to get our structure. So. You have to pass in a Minecraft server and a resource location. Now, the resource location is going to tell Minecraft where this structure is. So, you're going to want your mod 
ID and you set that up in your um, main class here and then the name of your file with a semicolon or not a semicolon a full colon but you're not going to include the nbt dot nbt you're not going to include that at the end so then after that um it's just we're just going to check if it can spawn here i'll get into more of that later uh and we're just passing in um the settings and stuff for the structure like rotations and that but here's now where we're getting into some interesting stuff so this temple dot get data blocks this is going to get those data blocks that we had over chests so um it's gonna we're gonna put that into a map which is kind of similar to a hash map if you've used those um and then we're gonna start looping through them so now every data block that has a value equal to chest so see up here it says block pos um and string so this is our values and this is our block pos uh which is how we get which is how we identify the values in our hash map so uh, I, i'm assuming if you're gonna want to be doing this stuff you have a fairly decent level of java um otherwise this probably won't mean anything to you so I, I'm hoping you guys have a fairly good um, understanding of Java. Um, so next, we're getting the key, and now the key is this part here, which is the block boss, and that actually tells us where the data block is. So we're going here, and we're going into world state, and then we're going to be setting the block into air so it just disappears so we don't have to worry about seeing ugly data blocks in our structures and then also we're using um that position to get the tile entity now the tile entity is our chest um so if it's an instance of tile entity chest we're gonna go in here and we're gonna set a loot table and a loot table is just a list of stuff that can spawn in the chest for this particular case, I have it set to which. Um, I tried to make my own custom loot table, but I was having some trouble with that. So for now, it's just set to uh, entity witch, and that'll just spawn in um, the normal loot drops for a witch. Um, so yeah, but next thing is, so I had named the data blocks over the brewing stands BR, and now we're going to get the brewing stand blocks and we're just setting it to air like our data block to air and we're getting the um brewing stand block and we're just checking that it is indeed a brewing stand here if tile entity instance of brewing stand so now what this code is doing here because i don't think they have loot tables for brewing stands in that so i kind of just made a little bit of a custom uh way of adding it in uh, so, what we have here is we have a for loop that is controlled by this random variable. Now, this controls how many potions will be spawned inside of the brewing stand. So, after that, we go into the loop and it picks a random one, one random potion from this list here. Um, and that's using a switch statement with a random number generator and then it'll run however many times uh potions need to be placed inside of here up to free potions because there is only free potion slots um so that's how i did the brewing stand um generation there or potion random potion spawning inside of the brewing stands so next we're go into our world gen file here and so what we have here is it checks what dimension we're in so we can have different generations for different dimensions uh so i've set it up so that our structure will spawn in the overworld now you don't necessarily want to have it like this you 
because right now the way I have it set up is it will spawn 100% of the time if it is a valid spawn location. And that is a little crazy. But just to show, just so it's really easy to find and to show you guys, I set it up that way. But uh, you can see I commented out this if statement. This if, if statement makes, makes it a 1 in 100 chance of spawning in a valid spawn location. So if there's 100 spawn locations, it has a 1% chance of spawning in one of them if they're valid. Um, so that's what we have there. Um, now, all these methods and stuff here are mostly for just um, finding valid spots for to spawn at and like checking where's the ground at, what blocks are on top of the ground. Um, um, this one here, for instance, it just checks if the area is big enough for the structure to spawn in. And another thing is here I should mention is this return statement. Uh, it checks if it's above ground. Now I've changed this to 31 because for another mod I have, I have, uh, it's called the Subterranean Creatures mod. So um, it's like a big cave system. So I wanted stuff to spawn a lot lower. But if you just wanted the stuff to spawn on the ground, you'd want to change that to 64. And then I would only let stuff spawn above 64 blocks. Okay. Um, and yeah, this is just checking what blocks are. Um, valid for the structures to spawn on um although it seems that it does not like to spawn on water uh for some reason even if i set it here i'm not 100 percent sure why i'd have to look into that um because i was wanting to have a boat kind of a boat spawn but wasn't working properly so that's this code and all this code is on github um so you can just download it and play with it i have it set up so you just um run a bat file it'll set all the stuff up for Eclipse and you just have to import the file into Eclipse and I can show you how to do that later. And then in your main class here, you're just going to have to register it. Um, so you're going to want to make new world gen class. Um, and that's where you're, that's just a class that you're going to have all your world gen stuff in. And also you're going to want to call your class that's kind of controlling your structure in that you're going to want to call it here so you're going to want to do a new world gen um and then you're going and well in this case it's world sub but since it extends world gen um you can have it under a world gen variable so new sub world generator then you're going to want to call the generate command and that's what's actually going to get the structure to generate in the world and add everything uh Okay, so that's how you do that. Um, but you also have to register this class with um, Forge, because otherwise Forge is not going to know about this and it's none of the code's going to run. Um, but you also have to um, have your structure class um, run its generate command in your world in your mod world generator class. Otherwise, again not going to know it exists and it's not going to be able to do it um so let's get into the game now and i'll show you the generation so i'm going to start the game up here oh that's another project i have uh, going uh one so actually um we're going to have to go to run configuration and we're going to have to go here okay going now and this is just the console okay so we have our minecraft world opening up and hopefully i put it, yes okay so i put the file in there okay so we're going to want to create a new world creative now this is just going to be absolutely crazy because it's going to spawn every possible place it can but i can show you how to turn down the uh rate at which they're going to spawn so it won't be so crazy but yeah you can see <laughs> literally every possible spawn place that is valid it will spawn but uh i'm just going to show you in here like we have the um drops from the witch loot um, and then we have all these potions in here from that list and they're spawning in random amounts and all that good stuff and we'll go in here and you can see all the data blocks are gone so that's good too i don't have any 
ugly looking data blocks over our um, chest and that and see it's just generating uh, random potions and loot inside of the chest so and I'll just quickly show you how to uh, turn down the uh, um, like amount that these will spawn oh it actually is working uh, spawning on the water okay wasn't doing that before but anyways you can see it's a little crazy so uh, yeah we might want to turn this down and uh, I'll turn off the uh, ability for it to spawn on water too these aren't boats, so probably don't want them to spawn on water uh, so I'll just quickly show you how to do that and we'll relaunch <laughs> so now this is gonna now this is just using a random number generator and this is just kind of controlling your probability here so now that's on it'll do a one percent it's a one percent chance but i'm going to actually change that so it's a little bit higher because otherwise it's going to be really hard to actually find one of these things so um what should i do do like a 10 percent chance which is still kind of high okay so save, and we're also going to want to go to. Um, oh yeah, so we will not. We don't want it to spawn on water. So this is this method here is finding ground for us, and it's call, it's also called in the can spawn here method. So we're just going to want to delete this code here and save, and then we're going to want to rerun it. And stuff will be a little bit more normal now, <laughs> not so crazy. And like I say, uh, I have all this code up on GitHub, so you can just go on there, play with it, import it into uh, Eclipse, and have fun with it. And hopefully integrate it into one of the mods that you have already. So uh, actually, I'm going to create a new world, creative. Okay. Okay, so okay, so it's loaded now. Um, so yeah, you can see now it's a lot less crazy, but I, I still have it set to a fairly high spawn rate. Um, so you'll still find a lot of these around. Like I say, <laughs> it, it's normally set to like one percent, and that's pretty rare. But I've set it to like ten percent now, so you can see you can see them spawning. There's a couple around here. Games okay, working, getting all the bottles, getting all the potions and that and you can just change this and do whatever you want with it uh so have all all the custom loot all custom structures and yeah so uh there you go so that is the there is a very quick tutorial on how to do structure generation in minecraft and now one thing i should mention is um you should really have a common proxy set up um this is just kind of, I, I just set this mod up, this tutorial mod up just to show you how to do stuff and quickly, um, and I just kind of went over the code very briefly, otherwise this, well, I went a little bit in depth, but uh, otherwise this would have just taken absolutely forever to do this tutorial and I'd have to split it up into multiple parts, but you have the code available to you and you can play around with it and hopefully you guys can make some stuff with this because it took me a while to figure out how to do this so at least you guys won't have to go for the same thing um yeah so thanks for watching and hope this uh, helps you out um bye